Hello and welcome con family. This is going to be a video about your first gen con, how to do it, what you need to know, and some little tips and tricks. It's gonna be a doozy, so make sure you grab something to drink, maybe a notebook and some pen and paper to take some notes, and let's dig right into it. If this is going to be your first gen con or you're thinking about going and you're overwhelmed, Firstly, that's okay. Literally everybody's overwhelmed. Everybody goes to Gen Con to have a good time. Everybody's there to make friends, indulge in their hobby. The only thing that you need to make sure that you've taken care of ahead of time is get a badge because sometimes Gen Con sells out. Make sure you have somewhere to stay and make sure you can get there and get home again. And everything else can be figured out. You will be fine. If you show up on site with literally nothing, you will be okay. There's gonna be things to do. You're gonna have the best time. Maybe you're worried that Gen Con is a place for like hardcore nerds, for like veteran nerds. You need to be playing LARPs and war game minis and you need to have played every type of game all of the time. That is so untrue. You can go to Gen Con and literally only ever have played Minecraft. That is like the nerdiest thing you've ever done. That's okay. There's video games at Gen Con, there's arcade games. You might be scared to try something new, it's okay. It's a welcoming place. People want you to try the thing that they're running games for. You wouldn't believe how many non-nerd activities there are. So there's a place for you at Gen Con, I promise. Let's start off with the category of most important things. Firstly, you wanna bring a really good attitude. You wanna go to Gen Con being excited. You wanna be open to opportunities, open to meeting new people, trying new things, and keep an open mind, plans change. Um, sometimes the GM that's running your game isn't the best, but try to make the best of it. Try and work with the situation that you're in. Just be flexible, bring a great attitude, be open to things, and I think you're gonna have the best time. One of the first things you're wanna, gonna wanna do is figure out how you're going to get to Gen Con. For a lot of people, that's a huge cost. For some people, it's not. Locals can walk across the street and they're already there. I used to live in Ireland when I started going to Gen Con, so for me, I had to book international travel. So the very first thing I used to do is book my flights. So that might be a place where you wanna start. There's a lot of options, there's trains, there's buses, there's driving, there's flying, there's walking across the street, there's carpooling with people. You have a lot of options, so make sure you explore those and figure out which one you wanna do and book it in a timely fashion so you can get a good deal. I usually recommend you know, for a really solid Gen Con experience, arriving on Wednesday morning and leaving on Sunday night, that way you get the whole plethora of what Gen Con has to offer with a little bit of extra time. Ideally, if, if it was me, I would go Tuesday to Monday. That way you have a whole day to just kind of get settled before things kick off on Wednesday. You can get the lay of the land, get a little bit more comfortable with the space and the city won't be overrun by nerds at that time, so you can have some time to breathe. So the next important thing you're gonna wanna do, and depending on the order of things, you may already have done this before booking your travel, but you will want to get your Gen Con badge. In 2017, they sold out of badges. It looks like that's something that is, might be happening every year going forward. And um, so in January, you'll wanna pick up your badge. It's usually towards the end of January, but the dates change. What the badge allows you to do is buy tickets for events at Gen Con and access the housing portal. That's the next step. Most important thing that you wanna do is the housing portal. The badge gives you access to the housing portal. Housing portal usually opens middle of February, start of February, maybe the end of January, depending on how dates fall that year. By far the most difficult thing that's like a lottery style thing is getting a hotel to stay at a Gen Con. And the pickier you are, the more difficult it is to get the thing you want. So again, being open-minded and flexible here is gonna be your best bet. I won't lie, the housing is tight at Gen Con. Hopefully there's a pack of you and you can approach this as a team. The housing portal opens at a very specific time on a specific date. So you wanna make sure you're online at that time, ready to go. Once you log in, it'll give you a, a time to come back and that is your slot that you can go get your hotel. It's a lottery, it's entirely random. So best of luck to you. Here's some options. There are some hotels at Gen Con that are directly connected to the convention center via hamster tubes that you walk across, skywalks essentially. 
those are the most sought after hotels, right? You never ever have to leave the convention center. You never have to go outdoors to get to it or get back to your hotel room. Those are also the ones that sell the fastest and are the most expensive. That's just how it works. If you go about a block or two outside of the convention center, things get a little less competitive and also a little less expensive. And then you can go even further than that. You can go all the way out to, you know, back to the airport or, you know, several like a 15, 20 minute drive and hotels get much more affordable. To give you a ballpark figure, a lot of hotels at Gen Con are going to be around that $300 mark a night. So you'll want to look at it. Um, hopefully splitting a room with somebody or maybe a couple of people to reduce the cost. There's other options, but you have to get them early. Like er housing is the number one most in-demand thing at Gen Con. So the other things you can do, maybe doing an Airbnb or something like that. Some people book outside of the housing block. Generally, that's gonna be more expensive. That's when you book a hotel outside of the block. Gen Con has a deal with the city and the hotels that they will get X amount of rooms from them for their attendees. What that does for Gen Con is, it, is that they're able to offer these hotel rooms at a reduced rate that the hotels would usually just bump up because of the high demand that there are for rooms. So I recommend going through the block if you can. However, if you cannot, it is possible sometimes to get a room outside of the block by just contacting the hotels directly, but usually they're more expensive. Next, events for Gen Con go live in May. The Gen Con team works all year round pretty much to create this giant grid schedule of events. There's going to be about 20,000 of them. 20,000 events. Yeah, so that's a lot. I understand, it's fine. You can either go straight to the Gen Con website, type in the type of thing you want, and it's it's got a pretty solid search engine now, so you can pretty much find what you want easily. I like to download the Excel type spreadsheet that they come out with. I have a video about how I choose to go through my events and how I plan my Gen Con. I, you can look at that, but it's a little bit more higher level Gen Con planning that maybe you're ready for if this is your first time. They released the event schedule about two weeks prior to opening up um, the ability for you to purchase tickets to these events. In those two weeks, what you might wanna do is look through this calendar and then on the website, if you're using the website to search around, you can add tickets to events to your wish list, look through the event listing, and then it gives you a lot of information. What you might want to look for is level of experience, and most events at Gen Con will say beginners welcome, no materials needed, no experience needed. And then when events go live, when you go to your wish list, there's a countdown at the top of that page. When that countdown hits zero, which is usually about two weeks after the event grid comes out, you want to hit that submit wish list button. It puts you in a queue and then gives you a ticket to your wish list. You may not get everything you want. Some events are high in demand. Again, don't get too attached to things. Be open and be flexible. And that's it. Then you have tickets to events at Gen Con. You shouldn't be worried at all. Just try whatever tickles your fancy. Try something new. Try something different. People are there to teach you. They want you to try the thing that they're there to teach people. You have a couple of options on how to get those tickets and your badge to you. You can choose to have them shipped to you via, I think it's FedEx, maybe it's UPS, I don't remember. And usually they ship, I believe in July, June, July, and then they get sent to your house. Or you can choose to pick up your stuff at Gen Con using Will Call. I have never had my items shipped to me because I hear horror stories about things being lost in the mail and then people not having the badges and tickets they needed and that's terrifying and also i'm worried that i am going to forget my stuff at home and just go to gen con and not have my badge and tickets and what that means is that you pretty much have to rebuy everything so i just do will call will call at gen con is open 24 hours it opens on wednesday like one o'clock it this it might change around you may want to check that ahead of time but then it stays open 24 hours so you can get your stuff anytime you don't really need tickets until thursday morning the line looks really long and it's gonna be really long right when it first opens and it's still gonna look long throughout wednesday and probably thursday but if you line up it's probably gonna be like 20 minutes to get through it that's the longest i've ever had to wait it's not as bad and intimidating as it looks i promise the line moves fast lean into it take it easy enjoy every part of it even if that part is being stuck in line with 
other people who are pa as passionate about gaming as you are. Parking at Gen Con is a thing that I've never really had to deal with because I've always had to fly into Gen Con. Luckily, um, just from what I'm hearing around and my friends, I know that you can now buy parking passes through the Gen Con event page where you buy tickets for your D&D game or something. So that's something you might want to look into in the past that if you arrive early enough, you can just go buy a weekend pass and park at the mall. Um, some people like to park way further out and if your hotel is further out, I don't really recommend driving in every day. I recommend just getting a Lyft. Gen Con this year, which is 2018, has partnered with Lyft, so, and I don't have all the details, I don't quite know how it works, but that means that you should be able to get some discounts and get to Gen Con in a more affordable way. Most vendors at Gen Con are going to accept most credit cards. I've never had an issue being rejected with my Visa or MasterCard, something like that. Even my debit card worked just fine. Um, but you know, sometimes the internet's a little spotty in there and their slidey thing doesn't work super great. So you might wanna have a couple of cards and you might wanna have cash on backup on hand just in case for some reason your card doesn't work or something goes wrong or you lose your card, you have a backup plan. And on that note, you will also want to probably call your banks if you don't do a lot of travel and let them know that you'll be out of state, probably spending a lot of money on weird stuff like board games and flights and hotels and food in weird cities, just so that they don't block your card while you're there. The show really officially starts on Thursday morning at 10 a.m. and then goes all the way through 24 hours a day until Sunday at 4 p.m. I think the dealer hall is open 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day and then closes a little earlier on Sunday as I mentioned it closes at 4 p.m. There are events that happen official Gen Con events that you can buy tickets through uh, the event grid for on Wednesday. Those events are usually free because you don't have a ticket for them and um, you know, they're usually centered around Union Station. There's a couple of really fun things. So if you arrive earlier at Gen Con or in Indianapolis before the before Thursday, it might be a really good idea to filter for events that happen on a Wednesday. Those are generally events that are meet and greet related, so you can make friends right before the con even starts and then maybe hang out with them throughout the con. This is really good, especially if you're gonna solo the convention this year. Gen Con is 24 hours a day. There are events happening Thursday at midnight, going into a Friday morning at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m. Obviously, there's not going to be quite as many as there are throughout the daytime of Gen Con, but there are, there are events that will go on all night and start in the middle of the night. You know, if you're a night owl, that might be a really fun way to do it. Sorry. Okay, we have made it through the most important parts. Next, let's get to packing. This is gonna be really simple because it really depends on you and your needs and what makes you comfortable. I, my advice for packing for Gen Con, and this is your suitcase to go, is to keep it really simple and really comfortable. Just pick your favorite, most comfortable clothes. Really, this is gonna be an event where you're gonna be with a lot of people, you're gonna do a lot of walking, it's gonna be hot, it's gonna be humid, sometimes it'll be cold, maybe there'll be a thunderstorm. You'll just wanna be prepared, but just keep it simple. I pack one or two pairs of really comfortable shoes that are broken in. You're gonna be on your feet at Gen Con a lot. You're gonna cover a lot of ground. I used to carry a Fitbit around me, but it was definitely been between 10 and 20,000 steps a day. So you're gonna be on your feet a lot. Don't put yourself through wearing heels or pumps or something that you haven't broken in. Pack a pair of comfortable shoes that you know are gonna be reliable. Gen Con is weird. Sometimes the air conditioning is just ramped up way too high for me especially. So I like to wear a t-shirt and a, like a light cardigan type thing that I can open up to give myself some air. I can throw it in my bag easily. You just wanna layer up a little bit so that you have options throughout the day. Also, it's Indianapolis. Sometimes there are thunderstorms and rain, but it's really humid. Get a really light rain jacket. You know, one of those things that's just gonna protect your clothes and your hair from running to get food to back to the convention center, but doesn't actually keep you hot. If you had your tickets shipped to you, this is what they're roughly gonna look like when they um, arrive in the mail. And your Gen Con badge is gonna look something like so. If that's not something you wanna forget, make sure you pack that and bring that with you. Don't forget a couple of credit cards. Don't forget your ID. Your ID is going to be essential to pick up your badge and tickets if you did not choose to have those items shipped to you. If you're gonna go pick them up, you're gonna need government photo ID for Gen Con to give you your stuff. You can't have anybody else pick it up. 
make sure you're prepared for that and make sure you bring photo ID with you. How about you try cosplaying? Bring your favorite character cosplay with you. It doesn't have to be huge and elaborate, not this year. I know that's intimidating, but it could be really casual. Go to Hot Topic. If you love Zelda, go to Hot Topic and pick up a Link dress. And other people who are, who love, who are Gen Con, who love Link or Zelda are going to be coming up to you and be like, I love this franchise too. Let's be friends. And it's a really great conversation starter. Don't forget the obvious, bring toiletries with you, bring deodorant, bring your toothbrush, makeup, makeup remover, hair things. Just bring the things that you would if you were traveling anywhere. Honestly, you're going to overpack and you're going to forget things both at the same time. I always overpack, I always bring too much stuff and I always forget things and both of those have both been okay. I try to limit myself and only bring the things that are most comfortable because that's what I'm gonna reach for when I'm actually in Gen Con. So I should probably just leave that uncomfortable dress here this year. Also, I always forget things and there is a mall right next door, the Circle Center Mall. So if you forget something, you're probably gonna be okay. Most events at Gen Con are gonna provide everything you need to partake in it. When you're buying tickets for an event, scroll down and look for materials needed. Most of them will say that everything is provided. Next category! Let's talk about food at Gen Con. A lot of this will depend on your budget. People are always like, do I need to go get groceries? Do I need to do this or this or that? Honestly, at Gen Con, it's super flexible and you can do whatever you want. So let's start with groceries. You do not need to get groceries. However, if you're on a tight budget or have a dietary restriction that's difficult to accommodate, sometimes it's good to go to a local grocery store and pick up a couple of things just in case, you, just to make yourself a little bit more comfortable. There is a Marcia's grocery store about 20 minute walk away from the convention center and there's also a Kroger, I believe, that is like 12 to 15 minutes away walking distance. So if you lifted or, or something like that, it would be much faster. Again, things change in Indy all the time. Things are being reconstructed, so this may not be true for the indefinite future. You can do things like pick up ham, mayo, cheese, bread, peanut butter, jelly, some Ziploc bags, and some protein bars, fruit, a couple of different things. Most hotel rooms, most hotel rooms will automatically have a fridge and microwave, so you can make yourself oatmeal, you can keep milk in there, sodas. So you can stock up pretty well at these grocery stores and then just live off of that for the week. That's totally acceptable. Some tips of advice when going to get food at Gen Con, if you're going to just go and get something uh, from a restaurant or something like that nearby, try not to get food close to the convention center right before the hall opens or right after it closes because that's literally when everybody else at Gen Con, that is 60,000 people are trying to get food as well. I recommend if you're going to go for dinner is leave, the, the hall usually closes at 6 p.m. So if you leave at 5 p.m., you can get to a restaurant before the rush happens. Also, you know, if you're getting breakfast, the hall opens at 10 a.m. I tend to go at like 8 a.m. That way I'm hopefully a little bit earlier and I beat some of the rush that's gonna be happening. In addition, don't just leave an hour for lunch. Like if you're like, hey, I'm just gonna go next door outside of the convention center and grab a quick lunch. I'll be back in an hour. It's probably not gonna work out for you. It's a high traffic area. There's going to be a lot of people trying to get food at the same time, no matter what time you go. So often you get to the place, there's like a 45 minute wait to get seated and then service is gonna be slower and you just have to accept that and roll with it. Just enjoy the time that you're there with your friends talking. It might take like 30 to something minutes to, to get your food out to you and that's already over an hour. So I would say plan two hours for your lunch. That should be okay, especially if you eat quickly and then get back to the events that you're gonna be in. Some cheap close by food options are, um, there is a Subway pretty close. There's a Panera about a block out. There is a, the, the mall that's like a block or two down from the convention center actually has a food court. So you've got like Taco Bell, Asian place. You have like a barbecue place. There's Aunt Annie's is in there. I think there's a Cinnabon. 
So it's a couple of really cheap options. Because it's a food court, they actually serve people really fast. So if you have the time to walk 10 minutes away from the convention center, you can actually eat pretty quickly out and, and affordably over by the food court at the mall. If you have the time to spend, there's also some options right by the convention center, like literally within the same block. There's Noodle & Company, there is Dick's Last Resort, there's a Shake & Steak. There's the Ram, lots of options really close by. And also the streets surrounding the convention center, Gen Con actually pays for food trucks to come along. And those are always really exciting. There's a schedule. I'm gonna try and link it below for 2018. That, that's a way to get variety right outside the doorstep of the convention center and it changes every day. You know, you can get peanut butter cupcakes, you can get donuts with like a burger in the middle of them or you can buy ice cream with two cookies as the sandwich or bubble tea or barbecue or whatever you want. The food trucks are uh, really good to get a lot of variety and try something a little different. There are two places that I always recommend visiting when at Gen Con. I recommend going to the Ram. It's around the corner from the convention center. And usually in the past it has been sponsored by Privateer Press, their company that makes a war game called War Machine and Hordes and the whole menu is decked out. It's like, like all of the menu items and beverages have been renamed to be things relevant inside in, in the game. So that's really fun. And all of the decorations is like nerdy war game fantasy stuff. It's just, I really love it. The other place you might want to check out is Scotty's. It's like a 10, 15, it's like a 10, 15 minute walk from the convention center. I believe that one is usually sponsored by Paizo who makes Pathfinder. I might be wrong about that, but that's really fun because you can buy uh, flaming fireball meatballs or, you know, like <laughs> magic missile pickle fries or something like that. You know, it's just really fun. Um, everybody goes there. It is an electric, exciting atmosphere to be in those places because you know that you love this nerdy stuff and everybody else does too. So the other thing you can do is buy food in the convention center. Um, honestly, it's not gonna be great quality and it's gonna be overpriced, but you can get pretzels and you can get pizza slices and sodas and stuff like that. It's an option. Another pro tip is to walk a little bit further away from Gen Con. You'd be surprised how many people don't wanna do that. If you walk like three blocks outside of the convention center, you can hit Hooters, you can hit Kilroy's, Old Spaghetti Factory, the Clada. Those are all eateries that are really good that usually don't have much of a line because it's like three blocks out of the convention center and people don't want to walk that far, but the food is good and fast and you'll be in and out of there faster than waiting 45 minutes at the Steak and Shake. If you're lucky, your hotel will offer you free breakfast. I know from the close hotels, the Embassy Suites is a really great one. It does get really full and busy with a lot of people, but hey, if you're one of those lucky people, go ahead and grab breakfast, at, free breakfast at your hotel. And this is what I do every convention, every Gen Con is Cluster Truck. Cluster Truck is like an app you can download or a website you go to. You can select food from a couple of different food trucks and a guy on a bike or sometimes a car will go around and collect the things you wanted and then just bring them to you. And just pay on the app and it's done. You don't even have to really go anywhere. You know, there are times when I've said, go ahead and deliver my food. You know, this, I want this avocado toast with this mac and cheese and this bowl of barbecue and this pasta and please deliver to this entryway at the Indiana um, Indianapolis Convention Center. And it's been great. It's just fast food. It gets delivered right to you. There's a fee, it's not the cheapest, but it's convenient. Next, what to have in your Gen Con bag. That is the bag that you're gonna be walking around with at Gen Con. First, let's talk about the bag. There are people that, you, the bag you need is going to depend on your needs. Um, I, I do not like the carts or the wheelie bags because no matter how kind and considerate somebody's trying to be, they're always in the way and people are gonna run into it. There are a couple of options. People like the messenger bags that go across. I do not, it hurts my shoulder. I'm gonna be carrying books and games and stuff around with me. I like to go with a backpack. I can put both shoulders on. This one's a little bigger than I usually go for. I usually go with a little smaller, um, but then it's out of the way. Both my hands are free to touch things, hug people, say hi to people. Inside that bag, I keep another bag. It's usually like 
you know, something that can shrink down to a pretty small size. But if I end up buying and overindulging um, a little too much, I can unfold that bag and I can just have extra space to carry stuff. I want power. This is an external battery charger for my phone. It charges it fully about three times if I needed to. I usually don't need the full power for one day, but it's good to have on hand. I also recommend bringing a notebook and a pen and paper. Usually the people that you're going to be uh, in events with, the people running that event are gonna have everything you need, but sometimes you wanna take notes. And also sometimes you wanna take down people's phone numbers and addresses and make friends with people. So it's just, I've always found it useful to have this with me. If you're one of those people that likes to bring their own dice to games, you can bring those. I have almost always forgotten to bring mine. It has never been a problem. People have always lent me theirs. So bring dice if you feel like you should. As discussed earlier, bring your cardigan. That's what you probably want to stuff into that big bag of yours. I recommend having a refillable water bottle in your bag. The convention center will have um, water fountains and things like that where you can just refill this. It's a good way to save on soda and beverages while you're there. If you're one of those people that just plans too much, you will want to have snacks. So bring maybe some bananas, some seaweed snacks. I don't know, bring candy, nuts, something like that. Anything to keep your energy up. Just have a couple of different options. Protein bars are good just to keep you going throughout the event. Obviously bring money and credit cards. That goes without saying. I recommend bringing hand sanitizer. The 60,000 people and con crud is real. Make sure you bring your ID so that, you know, you can pick up things, you can pay for things. I have this uh, super cool badge holder. You can buy these at Gen Con. This is the OG Gen Con one. It's a pride sticker on it. Um, you can buy these at Gen Con. Gen Con will have a booth set up. We can buy Gen Con merch. And it's handy because it's got pockets. You can keep your event tickets in here. You can keep business cards in here, money, pens, your badge, everything you need. You can just stuff this thing full and it's uh, sometimes a lifesaver because there's probably going to be some opportunities of downtime sitting around waiting for an event to start or lining up for something different you might want to have some icebreaker or quick games in your bag that are small and easy to carry around anything like love letters i have too many versions of love letter and um, but there's lots of games that come in bags now you can just throw them in then you have the small box games all of which you know, none of these will take up a bunch of room. I usually will have three or so in my bag just in case somebody wants to play something while we hang around and wait. And lastly, what you will want to have in your bag is the Gen Con program guide. These are going to be available on site at Gen Con. Sometimes from Wednesday, definitely from Thursday throughout the con. You're just going to see stacks of them. They're free. Go ahead and grab one. These are going to be invaluable for your first Gen Con experience. We'll talk more about these later. Okay, we've reached my random category of things that I still think you should know that are important to prepare you for your first Gen Con experience, even just to set your expectations and let you know what to expect. The first thing to understand is that Indianapolis is not like a really busy city where people are out in the street all the time. So when Gen Con happens for four days of the year, 60,000 people come to Indianapolis and take over the city. The restaurants are ready, the shops are ready, the convention center is ready, everybody is ready for a nerd invasion. And it is, cr especially if we arrive at like, on like Tuesday or Wednesday morning, to see the dramatic change of what Gen Con looks like the day before the convention to the day after the convention is absolutely crazy. Okay, let's talk some more about this program guide because you know, especially if you're soloing it, this is probably gonna be something that you lean on quite heavily. A lot of it is ads for vendors at Gen Con. It's gonna be highlights of people of interest, game manufacturers, games to try out, different things to do at Gen Con. I know the costume walk has like a two page spread and so does games on demand. So it's just a really good way thing to look through to get an idea of the types of thing Gen Con has to offer that you may not have thought about trying out before. There's a really good page at the start of the program uh, guide called General Info and it's really great. It's like where to find things, how things work at Gen Con, lost and found, lost a child, how generic tickets work, how well call works. Literally everything at Hustle has a copy of their harassment policy which is really good. I recommend looking through that just to get a really good grasp of what Gen Con's about and it's got 
the most accurate, up-to-date information that you need. And then the next pages are what you're going to be leaning on. It has maps. Maps are going to be super useful. It tells you where gaming companies are. It tells you what's happening in the different hotels, for example, because Gen Con isn't isolated to just the convention center. All of the connecting hotels also has events in them. One of them is like the RPG hotel. The other one is the LARPing hotel. The other one is something else. There's just so much going on. They couldn't contain it all to the convention center. So you'll want to look through these maybe at the start of the con. Take like an hour or two to sit down. Look at your tickets and figure out where the events are. Sometimes it will take you like 20 minutes to get from the Lucas Oil Stadium all the way back to the Hyatt or something like that. So you want to plan for that accordingly and make sure you have 20 minutes to get from one event to the other. And sitting down on your first day of Gen Con and figuring that out is a really good idea. Important stuff. And then they also have this handy map of all of the vendors. The vendor hall has since increased to Gen Con. I believe there's like 400 vendors this year or something, like, something crazy like that. There's a, a map of the vendor hall and right below it is and right below it is the name of the vendors. So what you might want to do ahead of Gen Con is figure out who makes your favorite game. For example, I really like this game, Hanabi. Um, you're never going to find Hanabi on the vendor list, but what you will probably find is the, the company that makes it. So this is uh, R and R Games. So if I look at this list, it's alphabetical. I will find R and R game. I will find R and R games, and then I'll find it on the map. And I usually will highlight it, and then I know I want to go hit that booth when the hall opens, and I want to check out what they have this year. Maybe they'll have something different. Also, if there are some gaming companies that you love, be it Cards Against Humanity, R and R games, so maybe some corset company, something like that. I would recommend checking them out on social media before Gen Con because sometimes they will have really cool things that they're doing at Gen Con that are exclusive and you might want to hit that booth first before anybody else does. The coolest thing by far at Gen Con is when the exhibitor hall opens the first day. So on Thursday at 10 a.m. I recommend getting there at 9 a.m. and lining up. It is crazy. It's called like the running of the nerds even though you're not allowed to run but there's like a little show right before the hall opens. It's really cool. They roll some big dice and they talk to you and they get you excited. And then there's a big countdown and everybody just pours into the hall. And you'll see some people are really aggressive about it because some gaming companies will only bring maybe 50 copies of a game, you know, and they want to hit that booth first to get that copy of the game so sometimes by the time you get into the exhibitor hall some things are already sold out and that's crazy i don't know if you know how many event types there are gen con but there are a lot here's some icons that kind of help you break down and the types of events that are at gen con i made a video on this i'm going to share it above but you know there are miniature events larp events there's film there's anime there's video games there's role-playing games there's card games there's historical minis events seminars workshops uh, random events, board games, it's just crazy. You know, there's uh, spa events, which are like non-nerd events, essentially. You can go crocheting or knitting or learn how to knife fight, or you can make yourself a chainmail bikini, or you can decorate cupcakes. It's literally endless. Like anything you can probably imagine, Gen Con's probably gonna have an event for it. So again, remain open-minded and just have fun. The other thing to keep in mind is that, you know, there's 20,000 events at Gen Con and you can maybe do 10 of them or something like that, depending on how long the event is. So you have to understand that, is an, that it is impossible to try everything at Gen Con. And hopefully that will free you up and give you some freedom. Really just look at the things that you want to do, be that like the things you always do because you want to make friends with more D&D people because that's what you like or trying new things because you will not have the opportunity to try those things at home. Maybe you want to learn how to do an anime cosplay dance. Maybe you want to learn how to make a cosplay or make a chainmail bikini. I don't know, but you can't do everything. So just do the things that seem the coolest and most interesting to you. If you do will call at Gen Con right after you grab your badge and your tickets uh, for everything, you scoot to the side and you grab yourself a little coupon booklet. They usually give you discounts for things in the exhibitor hall. And, you know, be it buy this thing and get a free game, get a 
percent discount on this you'll want to check that out because sometimes there's some really cool like deals you can get in there you can arrive at gen con as i said without any tickets whatsoever and just show up at gen con with just your badge that is okay there's a couple of options for you you can still go online and buy tickets to events i believe it's something like two hours prior to the event the other thing you can do is just buy a bunch of generic tickets the ticket itself is going to be the value of two dollars that you can spend on anything you like that's an event at gen con so for example if there is an event you really want to get into but it's sold out you could go to that event if there's some no-shows and there usually are some no-shows you can say it's a it's an rpg that's four hours and it costs four dollars you can give the event organizer two generic tickets that that will combine the value of four dollars and then you can take part in that event just keep in mind that event organizers cannot take your money they cannot take cash or a card payment and let you play in their event you need to pay with generic tickets so i recommend i usually buy like thirty dollars worth if you get stuck or lost or confused or have questions at gen con that's okay we all do i still sometimes do i get lost all the time but that's not the point the point is that everybody is very kind and welcoming and i would say that almost everybody that is attending gen con would be happy to help you out so if you just stop anybody and ask them a question two more people are going to stop also to try and help you out if your question is a little more specific though there are people at gen con that are going to all wear the same color t-shirt i don't know it changes from year to year so i don't know what it is this year uh, it'll have volunteer or gen con staff written on it they would be happy to give you the more official answer on where to go and what to do if you're stuck or lost or something like that and finally if you have something that you need to bring up with gen con something a little more serious or something that requires more attention you can always go to the gen con show office it will be the location of which will be listed here and um, sometimes it changes from year to year hopefully you're going to gen con with a friend going to gen con with a friend is the best way to do it that way it's a little bit more comfortable you're not quite as scared um, and you can use the buddy system. What is the buddy system? The buddy system is when you sign up for events with another person that you know. That way, if the game is terrible, if the GM is not the best, at the very least you're there with a friend and you can riff off each other. You can create an experience that's fun because you know each other and you're able to role play off each other or you're able to have a conversation during a board game that's not going super well, that's still entertaining to you. Um, it's a little harder to do that when you're soloing it because you don't know the feel of the other people, but at least if you're there with a friend, it makes everything a little better. You don't like crowds? I feel you. Um, crowds are a thing at Gen Con. That's kind of what happens when you squeeze 60,000 people into a space that doesn't usually have 60,000 people in it, but it is not as bad as you think and it is absolutely not as bad as people make it out to be it is absolutely possible to avoid crowds at gen con you just have to plan the running of the nerds thing that i said earlier when the hall opens there is absolutely no reason you need to go to that i think it's a fun experience but i also don't mind crowds plan accordingly avoid the high volume areas right when the hall opens right when the hall closes you know maybe avoid the convention center for a lot of the events and just stick to the surrounding hotels and have events there and and just take care of yourself if you need to take a moment out there's a, something called the quiet room at gen con and it is pretty magical i i go there at least once or twice during gen con you might need to go there once or twice a day that's also okay but i have no idea how they do it it's right in the center of the convention center and it is silent you can just unplug and recharge your emotional and psychological and possibly physical batteries for like 30 minutes i highly recommend that if you struggle with crowds a lot it's i i don't super but i still find a lot of value in going into that room don't over schedule yourself. You know, if this is your first time at Gen Con, maybe do like two, maybe three events a day at most. I always over schedule. I always manage to book back to back events for like 12 hours straight. I don't know why I do that to myself. Do not do that to yourself. Make sure you plan a couple of hours for lunch. A very easy rule to follow that is a little silly, but if you need rules, there's rules. Is a five to one, five hours of sleep a night 
two meals a day, one shower a day. Another thing that you can do when you're feeling a little run down at Gen Con is to get a massage right outside the exhibitor hall usually. They will just give you a back massage and you can pay them with your card or cash, whatever is most convenient. And I've never actually tried it, but I really need to this year. I just always feel like I'm too busy to give myself a little break. Okay, we're in the home stretch. Let me give you some things that I think you should absolutely try out if it's your first Gen Con that will give you a different experience that you probably cannot get um, where you're from and that will be a little more interactive and help you maybe make some more friends. If you're arriving on Tuesday night or early Wednesday morning, I recommend hitting up the local farmer's market on Wednesday mornings. Um, it's just a really cute way to get to know the layout of the city. There's a couple of, there's some cool vendors. You get to try some homemade food. There's cool ice cream, sandwiches, all that kind of stuff. It's just a really fun way to explore Indianapolis before everything kicks off. On Wednesday evening is an event called The Stink. The Stink is an event that is essentially designed to be a meet and greet so you can interact with other people that you don't know yet. And it's put on by a variety of different communities at Gen Con. You've, you've got the Gamers, G-A-Y-M-E-R-S. We've got Mavens that are local to Indianapolis. You've got the Gen Con UN, which is people from outside of the US. Uh, you've got the Gamer Wenches, which is a group of women at Gen Con. There's just, there's just a lot of fun. They've got some really cool like icebreaker games that happen there and it's right before Gen Con starts so you can make friends before the event really kicks off. Gen Con really officially really gets started on the Thursday, but there are official Gen Con events that also happen on Wednesdays. Those events are usually in Union Station, which is a space a, a block or so away from the convention center and they're, they're free and they're free events. So I know there was um, a guy doing cat cat ballad sing song stuff before the stink is on so if you're new to gen con and are looking for things to do and maybe to meet people uh, go ahead and look up the gen con schedule and filter for wednesday and see what free events are happening and attend some of those right outside the convention center on georgia street i believe is the gen con beer garden it's just a really fun like beer garden that's lined with food trucks there's the official gen con beer I know it's got a it's really cute it's got like a cool art design on it they get to name it and everything and it's just a really fun experience I personally know people that that is all they do at Gen Con is just hang out at the beer garden listen to the concerts that are happening get food and hang out with their friends so it's definitely worth checking out sometimes also like they have the official beer almost every year sometimes they have official beef jerky this year i think they have an official gen con sausage and they have an official gen con pizza uh, last year i think it was like some spicy pizza with gold glitter on it because it was the 50th anniversary and this year i think it's mac and cheese pizza it's really funny do not miss the costume walk if you like cosplay and even if you don't it's still a super cool spectacle it's uh, i think it's two o'clock on saturday you will want to check the program guide for the time and the route that they're going to be taking um, and line up a little bit early because they go right through the convention center and do a lap inside it and the halls just line with people so make sure you get a good spot to view everything and see all the creative people like really indulging in their fandoms it's super great i i wouldn't miss it ever there's something called first exposure playtest hall um, you buy a ticket, you go in, and you get to try a game that isn't published yet. And you get to play it, and the designer is right there, and you get to tell them what you thought of their game, what feedback you had. Were the rules good? Was there something that was weird? Was it unbalanced? And then they can make those tweaks to their games in real time before they get published. It's a really cool way to, to, to see and play games that are going to come out that aren't out yet, and have some influence maybe, or provide some feedback on how they work. There's so many things. There's like games on demand. Try that out. There is mega games that have like so many players in them. It's crazy. Like just be open to trying new things. Um, there's the Battletech pods, which you can physically sit inside and battle other robots. And they, that's somewhere where you can spend your generic tickets really easily. They take um, only generics, I believe. There are RPG interactives, which is really cool. This is something D&D does a lot, where they have a room of the same RPG. Maybe 20 tables are having, playing the same game, 
but there's somebody walking around that room that will like just randomly arrest a player and take them to the jail, which is another table where another group is playing another game. And it's like, you're in jail with these people now. They're also in jail. Um, and it's this really cool like D&D &D event where different tables are doing different things. And depending what you're doing in your game, you might get moved to another table because you took a wrong turn. So the rest of your group is alone and you split the party, but you joined up with another party and continue in their game. That's, I've never played in those, but I really want to. That just sounds so cool. And, and lastly, if you haven't registered for really any events and are uncomfortable with generics and maybe jumping into like an official Gen Con event straight away, you can just walk the exhibitor hall. There are vendors there that literally are there to introduce you to their game and they will run demos for free and you can spend your whole Gen Con doing this. Demos will usually take somewhere between 10 and 30 minutes and you will get to try a game for free. And you can do this all con, you can just play games and you can meet people very casually, no four hour commitment required. And if you like hanging out with them, maybe exchange information and do it again next time. That is really what you need to know. Um, let me give you some resources um, in the down bar. I'm just gonna rattle them off now, but I'm gonna provide links in the down bar. I think that will be really useful to you. Most years Gen Con will have an app where you can, you know, look up the events that you're in, buy tickets to events and all that kind of stuff. So I recommend downloading that. There's the Gen Con website, which will have all of the information that you need and it will be up to date. So the things I'm giving you here are obviously dated to 2018. Gen Con's website will have information that you need that is accurate and up to speed. There is a Gen Con Twitch channel. I recommend subscribing to that. Gen Con throughout the year has been doing Twitch videos where they interview different people at the company and show you how events work and how vendors work and how to buy tickets, how to return tickets, all that kind of stuff. So the, the Twitch channel is really helpful. Gen Con's website has forums where if you have questions or need help or anything like that, the forums have been really good and helpful for that. There is a uh, Fans of Gen Con Facebook page that is not officially Gen Con's, but is invaluable to ask questions. People on there are incredible. I, I've posted in there a few times and have gotten tens of hundreds of answers. So there are people there that want to help you. And it's also a good place if you want to make friends with people at Gen Con ahead of time, maybe to organize something like, hey, who wants to go to the farmer's market on Wednesdays? Post it in there and you'll probably get a group. Obviously, Gen Con has its social networks too. There's a Gen Con Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff. Follow that to keep up to speed with menus and things that they're updating all the time. And then other than that, just use YouTube and blogs and stuff like that to find out more information. My channel has been a good resource for a lot of people. I recommend checking out some of my other videos because I think they might be helpful to you. And uh, that is it. If you have any questions of something I haven't covered or maybe I was unclear on, please ask those questions below. I'd be happy to answer them for you. If you are about to go to your first Gen Con, please comment below after Gen Con and let me know how your experience was. If you like this video, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. That's all for now. Bye.